Hi, my name is Isaac Gaydon. Uh, welcome to David Richard Gallery in New York City. We're in the um, Harlem Gallery, and we're here to take a look at uh, the new paintings I've done, which are called um, The Numinous Sublime and The Romantics. And um, this first look at these paintings, there's um, seven paintings uh, in this body of work on display now that are part of a larger body of work that includes 19 paintings. These paintings are uh, 12 foot tall and nine foot wide, and they're oil on canvas. And this one is a, a triptych, so it, it um, ends up being 27 foot wide. Uh, these are part of a series I've been working on over the last five years that I've generally uh, called tonal paintings. And um, I, I paint with uh, all the colors in the, uh, the spectrum, red, yellow, blue, into, um, with oil paint, and I try to create um, formless uh, bodies of work which are um, built up of diffused color that's oftentimes uh, presented in a gradient. Um, this is a little bit of a brighter one, and um, this body of work, probably more so than the previous ones, really I'm trying to address uh, the progression of romanticism and the sublime. And the sublime is something that you know, first kind of entered artistic discourse in the 18th century with uh, uh, philosophers like Edmund Burke and Immanuel Kant. And they, uh, and then it, it continues on into the 20th century and there's other um, writers like uh, Robert Rosenblum, which really kind of apply it to other abex artists like um, Mark Rothko, uh, Barnett Newman, Jackson Pollock, etc., and Clifford Still. And, um, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, and thinking about the sublime and romanticism that I've always um, kind of considered and followed is that a lot of times the sublime is presented as something uh, bigger than oneself. It often has to do with uh, something being large and then feeling small at the same time. Like as if you were standing on a vista overlooking a massive landscape, which then appears very large and the individual, the subject, feels you know, very small in comparisons. And so um, the, the size of these work, that is the, the physical size, uh, what it does is it, it creates a relationship, a scale relationship with the subject, that's the viewer or myself, that has the phenomenological um, quality. And, and that means a relationship between the body, the physical size of the body and the canvases so that it, it encompasses your whole peripheral. And, um, one of the things in that discourse of the sublime uh, usually has to do with the feeling of awe and or terror and of, of, of man's relationship with nature that could be um, violent or, or destroy you, um, uh, like Niagara Falls uh, or something like that uh, as an example. But there are other examples of the sublime you know, throughout um, the development of Western art. Uh, one of them, for example, is the American painter Worthington Whitridge. And uh, he would talk about uh, an American sublime, which was wholly different than a European idea of a sublime. And one of the things that he talked about was the rawness of the forest. And, um, and in Europe, at that period, it was very deforested. So when you walked into the forest in, in, a, in, you know, in the early part of, uh, I guess, the 18th century, 19th century in America, there were still areas of the natural world that were entirely raw, that hadn't uh, ever been uh, you know, cut down or anything. And that rawness of nature is what Worthington Whitridge was talking about as an American sublime as opposed to a European sublime. Um, you know, the other one that the title of this uh, exhibition, the Numinous Sublime, really is gathered from is uh, the, uh, the metaphysical uh, theologian, uh, Rudolf Otto. And he talks about uh, the sublime in relation to a spiritual kind of experience. And I don't want these to, uh, to consider it through a religious one, but a much more subjective and personal relationship to meditative kind of uh, viewing of a work of art and a, an aesthetic experience rather than just a purely an aesthetic one or one that's rooted in terror or horror. Personally, I feel like there's a lot more to the sublime than just aspects of horror and terror.